All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here on the Successfully Unemployed show. I am super excited about today's episode where we're going to be bringing on somebody who is just a normal guy like us, but has figured out a way to become successfully unemployed. And he is the owner of doyouevenblog.com, and he shows people how to make money online. I am so, so excited to have Pete McPherson here on the show with me. Pete, thank you so much for being here with me. Dude, Dustin, thank you for having me. I am pumped to be here. Awesome. To be Man, we've known each other uh, for I don't know, about six, maybe eight months now, but I feel like every single time we talk, we, we hit it off as well as we're in the same type of business model. We have the same type of personalities where we just want to help people. So tell me, how do you make money to provide for your family without a job? That's a great question. I run, well, you said do even blog. Thank you for plugging me like right up front. That like makes it a little bit easier for me. I run the blog and a podcast and a YouTube channel. Those are all like just content outlets, but I have a pretty sizable audience at this point, nice and growing. And the primary monetization method, you asked me how I make money. This is, prim this is primarily it, is through a private paid community, just a membership community. If people heard that term. That's exactly what it is. A membership community for creators also looking to make money from content. Bunch of bloggers, bunch of podcasters, that sort of stuff. So that and freelance, which is going to be part of the theme of our podcast today here, Dustin, I'm going to predict that. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about the business as well, but freelance income a little bit. That's actually died down the past six to 12 months. And then my private community uh, called Online Impact. That's fantastic. Now, I we've been talking a little bit and I know your backstory and I want to I want to show people that people that get laid off I got laid off I was working I was even working for the county government it who gets laid off or fired for the government nobody does but apparently I did and so wow. I got laid off and I want to know about your backstory because I want to show that hey normal everyday people can do this so tell us about when you were working this job you know being a CPA and then starting another company and then eventually or start starting with another company and then yeah. now having do you even blog yeah okay this is fun I love talking about myself I love telling my own story this will be easy so a little piece of context what might make it interesting you use the word normal like me and you both well First of all, you're right. We are normal people, sort of, but we're not really that normal. We're, we have different interests that other people don't have. I think what you mean to say is also, we're not especially smarter than everybody else or better than anybody else. Or like, there's, I have no skills whatsoever that provide me a natural advantage over starting an online business or doing a side hustle or quitting a job or anything like that. So I just want to preface that up front. So my story, yes. I was funneled all through life by my parents and my teachers and my counselors. I never knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. I was, I was kind of funneled to get good grades in high school, which I did. I never had to work for it. I, I was smart enough. I was a super smart, but smart enough. I went to college because everybody said I should. And I majored in music because I was really into percussion and music and I didn't know what else to do. So I was like, okay, that sounds kind of fun. Uh, and again, getting funneled to different things outside of music now like oh maybe you don't want to major in music and i'm like i don't i do i don't know i have no idea what i want to do with my life i dropped my music major based on suggestions from friends and counselors and family and everybody i <laughs> let me count my majors I, I think i have five college majors under my belt dustin i swapped from this thing to that thing i majored in business i majored in italian like the language ask me how that's a major it is a major. I know zero words in Italian. I failed every class that semester. I'm not joking. Um, so the University of Georgia didn't like that very much. They kicked me out uh, just for a semester. They're like, Pete, get your crap in order, man. Uh, and I did. I did fairly well. Delivering pizzas, just taking small odd jobs, not knowing what I want to do with my life. I go back to school the semester afterward, and I find sociology. And I love it. It's really fun. And everyone around me is telling me, Pete, this is the year... 2007, you just need to get a degree and you will get a job in this economy. Our economy is perfect right here in 2007 in the United States. You just need to get a degree. Sociology, great, get it. So Dustin, I went, I finished my undergraduate <laughs> degree in sociology, which was late, uh, well, it was like 2008 at this point, like a year, year and a half later. And then anybody who's listening, 
who is of age knows that there was a little bit of a recession in 2008. Sociology majors, not necessarily guaranteed jobs. Okay, I didn't have people knocking down my door. I was applying for jobs, but I was like, not getting anywhere. I didn't know what to do. People told me I needed to graduate and to get a degree, so I did. And what now? Like, I had no idea what now. I tried substitute teaching. I took another like six to 12 months off. Like, I had no idea. I was living with my ex-girlfriend. And I remember uh, I broke up with that ex-girlfriend, or I say that, she broke up with me. Let's be honest. Uh, She broke up with me. I moved back in with my parents in my hometown, and I went to a mentor. I was like, what should I do with my life? Like, legitimately, I I have a college degree now. I can't get a job. Like, I don't know what to do. And this gentleman, ever so friendly, said, you were in a music, right? You were a music major? I said, yeah, that's what I did. He's like, oh, you should do accounting. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And me and my nature, I'm like, okay, I'm getting funneled, right? I'm getting funneled. I like money. Accounting sounds like money. Okay, I'll try that. So at this point, I'm a little older. I'm living with my parents. I'm now majoring in accounting. I'm going back to getting some undergraduate classes, but I'm really going to get a master's degree in accounting. Completely switching fields here, but I'm, I'm a little bit more motivated now. I don't want to live with my parents forever. I want to make money. I want to get a job. So I got really good grades. I studied hard. I graduated in no time. I have a master's degree in accounting. I studied for the CPA exam and I passed it in two months and I started applying for quote unquote real jobs, full-time jobs. I never had a full-time job in my entire life. Worked like 30 part-time jobs, no full-time jobs. Uh, And I got one. I got an offer letter. I will never remember uh, or I never remember. I will always remember where I was holding my offer letter, $52,000 a year, never heard of that amount of money in my life. I'm looking at that like, I am rich. I am done. I am retiring early because I have now this job, $52,000 a year. So I take it. I'm also getting married at this point to my longtime girlfriend and fiance and moving to Atlanta to start this great job. Awesome. Public accounting, audit, 75 hour weeks, like right off the bat, busy season. (laughs) I'm doing like financial audits. It was okay. I made a lot of money. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it either. Again, I was funneled here. This is the moral of my story. So my wife eventually joins me in Atlanta after she finishes up her work in the town we were living in. And I worked there for a year and then I worked there for another year. And it's super boring. I don't really care about my work. I just kind of do it. I go home. Not a big deal. We move outside of the city a little bit, the suburbs. We have a little bit more money. I bought a new car. I, uh, you know, I haven't paid off student loan debt. That's a different story. No matter. I'll worry about that when I'm like 50. Uh, we buy a house, right? We, we plop down some money. I'm not into personal finance at this time, if you can't tell already, Dustin. And I switch jobs. I, you know, I'm making more money. I'm getting like $5,000 raises, like clockwork, like every year up the ladder, corporate ladder, corporate America. I bored to tears. I can't even tell you. I love my coworkers. My boss was amazing. My job was so easy and mindless. I managed $7 billion in revenue, by the way. That sounds really fancy, but that was just Google uh, Sheets and Excel and numbers and so boring, so meaningless. I got really bored. So here is a turning point in this story. This is a long one. I hope you signed up for the long version here, Dustin. This is a long version of my story. At this point, I am getting more interested in online business and blogging and side hustles and just other creative endeavors because I my job is just soul sucking. Like there's nothing there, it's really boring. I work like four hours a week, by the way. Like into the four hour work week. Uh, my This isn't just how smart I am. My boss and I work together to like consolidate my job and like streamline it when I first started working there. And so what was 40 hours a week was like 30 hours a week and then 20 and then 10. And eventually it was kind of like four. And they knew that, my boss knew that. He helped me do it, but I was just bored. So I had started my first blog uh, when I was like 2009, 2010. I didn't, it was just a journal, basically. I, I quit it eventually. And then I did another one about bluegrass, just like little hobby stuff, like doing stuff on the internet. It was kind of fun back when I was in grad school. Nothing ever came of it. It was just like a little hobby. So I took like a five-year break from that. And when I'm super bored at my accounting job, I am starting to get back into that. I start a personal finance blog and it was terrible, by the way, but I made cool connections and cool friends that I'm still friends with to this day. And I tried some other online businesses, none of which made a dime. They were all terrible. They were really bad, but I was doing stuff and doing stuff and doing stuff. After a while, this was like two years after I started that most recent job, I spoke to my wife and we had a child by this 
point and another child on the way, she was pregnant. I was like, I want to quit. Like this is, I'm commuting. I'm driving hours and hours a day in Atlanta traffic. And this job is really boring and meaningless and I can't do it from home. They won't let me. I have to be there. And I mean, I'm getting paid a lot of money, but we have debt. We still have student loan debt and you know, we got a mortgage now and it's expensive. And I just, I just don't know what to do. I want to quit. Like I want to get out of this. I don't know what to do. So a year goes by when I'm trying to like make those decisions and figure out what to do. And so eventually we tried some different ideas and we decided to scale back my work. I will take another job, like a part-time job or, or something that can still help pay the bills, but we're going to sell the house and we're going to downsize. And then hopefully I can blog on the side, like try to build some, you know, side hustle that replaces some of my income, et cetera. So I found myself a job. I kind of worked myself into it because I'm a sneaky person. Uh, it was in my hometown again. So we moved back to sunny Rome, Georgia, where I'm talking to you from right now, Dustin. We sold our house. We moved into my grandmother's house, which was vacant. She lived in a nursing home, but that house was available and sold uh, some stuff. We moved our stuff, took our kid, one and a half kids. She's pregnant almost about to have a second kid. I quit my job in corporate America. And I took a job at a co-working spot, a startup, a startup. They, they had plans. They had a big vision. I came on board there with a salary as less than I was making in accounting for sure, but it was still salary, health benefits, the full package. And it's only part-time like 20 hours a week. So I'm in my head, I'm like, perfect right? I have this job, it pays me benefits, I get some money, and I get, to, I get to like start a business and scratch this entrepreneurial itch and figure out what my thing is. The moral of the story is successfully unemployed. I got laid off after one paycheck. They paid me one paycheck. I'd already moved my family, like different home, different town, an hour away. Like, what do we do? What do we do? So to end this little story, we can, maybe you can decide where you want to take this conversation from here. We, uh, we had a good cry. You know, we, we struggled for a couple of weeks there. We could then move back to a city. I couldn't find any jobs in my small town, any accounting jobs. We'd have to move to a city, back to Atlanta, Georgia, or to Detroit, or Texas, or California, or somewhere where there's accounting jobs. We could do that, move our family again, or we had a little bit of money saved up. I got a little bit better. Uh, we were living in my grandmother's house. So we, uh, maybe we could try and make this lifestyle work. We don't know what it looks like, but maybe we could. I could try to do full-time entrepreneur stuff and we'll see what happens. That was three, three and a half years ago at this point. And we've somehow made it work and survived since then. That's awesome. And at, at that time, did you already have, do you even blog or did you, after you got laid off, you got, you got done with that startup, did you start doing even blog after that? I did. It took about three or four months. The first thing I did was, well, first of all, this is personal finance related. This is not what you asked, but I want to, I want to disclose this. Uh, it took a while to make money. The first thing we did was slash expenses, like budget. We, we had no budget because we had no money, <laughs> no money coming in. My wife was not employed either, by the way. Like she taught part-time piano lessons. Like we didn't, we had no salaries, no incomes. So the first thing we did was like slash expenses. I sold my car. I downgraded. We stayed in my grandmother's house because that was mortgage free and rent free. They let us like squat there, basically, slashed a bunch of expenses. That's the first thing we did. Okay. I tried to start a local marketing firm, like an agency. It was terrible. I, I really, I was bad at it. I was bad at it. I don't like clients to this day. I'm like, I don't like clients. I don't want any clients. I like to do my own stuff. Um, I did that for three or four months. And then I was like, okay, I got to put this aside. I want to do my own thing. I want to do a content business, a blog or a podcast or something creative or a YouTube channel, or I want to like do stuff on the internet. That's what I love doing. What do I do? And the answer uh, was do even blog. But how I got there was this. I don't think I've actually ever sold this on a podcast before, which is interesting, but I started 40, 50 plus blogs and online businesses since 2009, like all throughout those times. And through my accounting days, like I started thing after thing, after thing, after thing, the one topic I would not allow myself to start talking about was blogging itself. Like the, the meta game, like blogging about blogging, right? I would not let myself talk about it. Cause I was like, Oh, it's been done. You know, Pat, Flynn, like, oh, there's, there's the Pats and the Amy Porterfields and the John Lee Dumas and the Stu McLarens and this person and this person, and this person, everybody's talked about it before. The world doesn't need another person like that. Not going to do it. So when I got laid off 
and I tried to start the marketing company. And a couple of months later, I was like, dude, screw it. I'm not going to curse on your podcast. But I was like, just forget it. That's what I want to do. That's what I care about. Throughout those 40 and 50 blogs, that was the only thing I was really interested in across all of those. I like talking about digital marketing and podcasting and blogging. Like why I'm going to let myself do it. And so that day I called my friend Bobby, uh, who I had met through my personal finance blog a year or two before. I was like, Bobby, you make $15,000 a month like clockwork from your blog. Can I just have a Skype call with you and ask you how to just pick your brain, ask you how to do it. He's like, dude, yeah, sure. No problem. So I recorded it for like an hour and I got done and I was like, oh, that was so much fun. That was so useful. I loved that. I want to do it again. So I reached out to Michelle Schroeder from making sense of sense, making like a hundred, $150,000 a month, some ludicrous amount. And I asked her the same question. I was like, please, can I just like hit you up on Skype and ask you questions for an hour? I'm trying to learn how to do this. And she's like, yeah, of course, no big deal. So I did that, recorded it, loved it, absolutely. And I was like, wait, I think this is a podcast. So that was the day. It was like April 15, 2017, like three years ago-ish, almost two and a half years ago. I was like, I think I'm just gonna try this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do a podcast, just interviewing bloggers, and I'll see what the hell happens. And that's the, the answer to your question. That's awesome. Now, there is so much in there and how you got started and then how we're looking at ourselves and saying, how can we do exactly what Pete did? Now, walk us through. Now, you've had done so many interviews already. You have so much knowledge. You've helped so many people. If somebody listening or watching this wants to get started, they're saying, you know what? I want to try it. I want to do what Pete does. Not necessarily teach about blogging, but I want to make money blogging or podcasting or YouTubing. What, let's, let's go through a, maybe some steps. What, where should they start if they want to do this? The first step is also going to be the one that no one in your audience wants to hear. No one, no one in my audience wants to hear it either. And that is to manage your expectations right now. There are people out there, I won't name names, we are not one of them, that will try and sell you on success. Hey, buy my $500 product and I will teach you how to start a profitable blog that makes a crap ton of money and you'll retire early and be mega rich. Maybe that happens to you, maybe not. Uh, I, I, I know a lot of bloggers and that has happened to very few people ever since like 2005. Like if you started a blog in 2005, that was pretty good timing. If you started a podcast in like 2007, 2008, and you're still going, that's pretty good timing. We're done with that now. But step two, and this is the question you asked for, it is still possible. I just want people to manage their expectations. It is going to be harder than you think and you imagine. Uh, yeah, you can make money and you can make money in month one, but it's gonna be a little tough and it's gonna require you being a little uncomfortable. That's steps one and two. Step one, just manage your expectations. Don't let people like me or Dustin hype you up, get you all jazzed up, and then sell you $2,000 products, live seminars. I'm joking, but that's actually <laughs> happening. Or manage expectations. Number two, along with manage expectations, know that it, it is possible. It is. You're just going to have to figure things out for yourself. That's step one and two. Now for the official answer for your question. This is going to be a little corny too. People have heard this before, but I still believe it's kind of true. Please start. The only way to get better is to start now. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. I just had this guy named Joe Salsi Hi. You hung out with him at Podcast Movement and VinCon as well. Just a really great podcaster and like radio personality. He has a great podcast, Stacking Benjamins. Shout out to them. I love Joe. He came on my podcast recently and he said something to the akin of, we waited a year before we started the podcast. That was eight years ago. We should have started nine years ago. And you know what? If we had started nine years ago instead of eight years ago, we would have made the same mistakes sooner, a year earlier, and now we'd be one year further ahead. We'd be one year further ahead now. So step number three, if it's a podcast you want to do, great. If you're dead set on starting a blog, great. It'll probably change. And in fact, you're going to have to go through some bumps and trials and errors and uh, that sort of stuff to figure out what the heck your thing is, but start, please. You will get better. You will make mistakes. You're going to do dumb stuff. As long as you don't quit, like unnecessarily, uh, just start. You will get better. You will figure out your thing. You'll figure out affiliate marketing. You'll figure out what it takes to drive traffic and get, make money from ads. You will figure out how to get podcast sponsorships. It is going to take a while. Remember steps one and two? Manage expectations. 
it is possible, but it's going to take some hustle. It's going to take some being uncomfortable. Start. You can make money. I'm here to tell you. That's true. I see new people do it all the time, but you got to start and you got to make the mistakes and you got to get better. I know that's not really satisfying to share with people, but that's, that's my honest answer to that question. Well, I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, I know I've been doing this since 2005 and sorry, 2015, 2005 is way longer. I was like, whoa. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> since 2015, <laughs> that's when I first started and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I still am learning as I'm going. Now, I love your idea of just starting and talking about Joe Saw see how you know like if he would have started a year earlier, he'd be a year further along. Now, even if you get started right now and you knew everything, it's gonna change in the next six months or a year. Things are gonna keep changing. But at the same time, you're gonna change too. You're gonna realize, man, what I did a year ago, like, oh man, I could fix that. I could make it better because you learn, you grow, you see what your customers like, you see how you craft your message better. You see, like basically you just change, you just keep adapting. Now what is interesting is never before in the history of the world could somebody within two or three years, or like you said, even in one month, start making money from something. And the internet has made it so much more easy for people to make money or be successfully unemployed. And imagine starting a blog, starting a podcast, starting a YouTube channel, using all these to make money. And within two to three years, having a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars a month or more coming into where you literally don't have to work a job. It's just like the history of the world has, it's all coming right now where we have so many great opportunities for all of us. So what are your thoughts about utilizing technology in all of this? Uh, can I answer that one in just a second and add one more thought to what you just said? Uh, I'll add a step four to my previous, like three steps to kind of get started along this path. I'll add a step four. This is something that's a little contrarian to popular belief. I don't know if a bunch of people would agree with me. This, this is just my opinion. Start small and not just start small, but also aim small. A lot of people see income reports. So they see that Dustin's making like a billion dollars a month from his real estate and now his like online business and his courses and stuff like that. And they kind of want to start with a huge snowball trying to push it downhill, where in reality, it's a lot easier to start with a really tiny snowball and push that snowball downhill and then watch it get bigger and bigger. For example, something very concrete. When I started Do You Even Blog, I told myself right up front, I have to make money in month one because I need to prove myself. I had no existing audience whatsoever and I'm gonna be blogging about blogging. Like I, I don't have a million dollar blog. I don't, I don't have a great story where I could convince people, hey, I'm an authority. You should listen to me because I know what I'm talking about because I have a million dollar blog. I didn't have that. So I was like, I gotta figure out ways to kind of, you know, make a dent in this space to get heard. I was like, I, I'm gonna make money in month one. I don't know how much it is. So I didn't go for $10,000. I didn't go for $1,000. I didn't go for a hundred dollars. I went for one dollar, and I straight up I asked. I got my first sponsorship was one dollar, and it's so it's totally stupid, by the way. I don't necessarily recommend people doing this, but for me, it was like I got to make one dollar, and I told people that I was like, I know this is stupid, but here's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this just to, so I can say I made one dollar. I told people that straight up, and then somebody was like, Yes, okay, that's fine, whatever. It's one dollar. It's stupid. Somebody played my stupid game. Well, the next week, still in month one for me, I went out to, uh, I think it was like six or seven different people. I won't share where I found these people because that would actually, that would actually be a negative for folks. But I, I found a bunch of other bloggers uh, in a short space that I could like reach out to. They didn't know who I was. I reached out to like five or six of them and I asked for a $50 sponsorship. Still not big money, but I was specifically going for immediately sustainable. That pays for my domain and hosting for my website for like an entire year in the first month, $50. So the big takeaway, I don't want to like ramble too much here, but I think step four towards making money over the internet, whether that's a blog or an online business or whatever it is, is to aim for sustainability first, or even just covering basic expenses or just starting small, like just start with the small snowball, try to roll that downhill. Don't try and go too fast because those strategies might not work. I think if you aim smaller, you might even be, you know, trying some, some different strategies, maybe even some new strategies or, or something. I don't know if that's very conceptually uh, effective for this podcast here, Dustin, but I, that, think it does. I just wanted to add that on. Okay. No, I, I think it does. And I want to add a fifth one and you, you, you already know this, but you've already been saying so much of it, but I want to add it to it. 
you would not have started if you didn't already know a few people and just start saying you know, like the, uh, the gentleman Bobby pick his brain um, yeah. and you also wouldn't if you didn't start reaching out to people and say hey I want one dollar for the for a sponsorship or these other bloggers and say fifty dollars or you know so you were networking so I would say number five would absolutely be networking and meeting more people and connecting and serving and helping more people because in this business the more people that we can help and we can serve and the more people we network with the better yeah. the business gets I know for my business uh, master passive income my real estate business is great I, that's where I make all my money but for master passive income in 2015 I started but for like two years, I was just spinning my wheels. I was doing just things wrong. <laughs> in 2017, I finally went and met some people that were doing this. And I was like, wow, okay, wow. this is the right way to do it. And so now, fast forward now, I'm doing better and better and better because I'm networking. So that's my number five. It's all about people and networking. What are your thoughts? Not only that, but it's so funny. I got to tell you, I was terrified in those first couple of months when I was like reaching out to people about sponsorship. That's a brand new blog and podcast or reaching out to podcast guests to come on my own show. Even if you don't have a podcast, like just reaching out to other people to ask questions, to network in general, just be like, Hey, I just want to say, I admire your stuff. I just want to be friends for the long term. I just want to say, thank you. I appreciate you. Other content creators, other authors, other people in your industry or your topic or your niche or whatever that is. Don't be afraid. I know it's like really corny advice to do too, but I was terrified to like send emails to these people. In my first month I had heard back from, well, Bobby, but I kind of knew Bobby. Michelle, she didn't know me from anybody. Neil Patel, it's like, they didn't know me. He didn't care. I sent that guy one email about coming on my podcast and he just forwarded it to his assistant. He was like, hey, book it. Book the, book the podcast episode. I was like, what? This is awesome. This is super easy. Uh, so I, I find that time and time again, like as long as you're like an honest and sincere person and you're not trying to like spam anybody. By the way, if you are an honest and sincere person and not trying to spam anybody, make that really obvious. Like just use a friendly email, friendly tones. Don't try and be too professional. Don't buy, don't try and be like too extreme. Just be yourself. There you go. That's my advice. Uh, but people want to network with you. That's my big takeaway. Don't be afraid. People want I love to that. network with you. I love that. Now, Pete, there, is, is there anything else we might've missed in explaining how we can, we should and can get started in starting online businesses? Hmm. I guess, uh, well, let me answer that with your other question too. You're talking about technology and it's 20, 19, maybe even 20, I don't know when this episode comes out, but maybe 2020. Technology has definitely gotten to a point, we've been saying this for years, but it keeps improving, <laughs> uh, where it's now easier than ever to get a Shopify store up and running or a blog live on the internet. I was just uh, showing one of my, my people in Online Impact today, like the newer Studio Press WordPress themes. I like their themes, they're, they're nice and pretty. They have like a one click import button where you can import like a bunch of demo content. It's, I swear, it's literally like one click and now you have a pixel perfect website. It's insane, we didn't have that 10 years ago. Anyways, the point is, it's never been easier, sure, to start a blog or a podcast or whatever that is, but that also makes it way harder, <laughs> right? It's harder to stand out from the other billion people on the planet that are starting blogs and podcasts or whatever. And so my, in fact, my entire brand is built on this by the way, it's more competitive than ever, even for people who are like, oh, there's plenty of room for everybody. There's no actual real competition. Eh, I kind of disagree with that. There kind of is in some ways, not in always, but in some ways, it's never been more important to stand out. That could be producing content that is unique, i.e. telling your stories. Nobody else has that. Nobody else can share that. Doing interesting research or getting data, sharing that on the blog. doesn't work so much in podcasts, but on podcasts, you can interview people like interviews are unique, no matter how many times I go on other people's podcasts, it's always a unique episode. Doing interesting stuff, standing out, being yourself and putting that out there on the internet has never been more vital. And I'm gonna argue it's gonna get nothing but worse. So that, I think that answers the technology question and anything we miss, like just start, don't get me wrong, and be patient, it's gonna take a while, especially if you're doing this to make money, but try and approach it from a point of, standing out, at least in your marketing, like add value to people's lives. Yeah. Teach them stuff, help people, but you're going to have to stand out. If, in fact, if you don't stand out, you're invisible. Hashtag Seth Godin, hashtag purple cow. That's a wonderful marketing book. I think people should check out. You're going to have to stand out more than ever in 2020. I completely agree. Standing out. And I, I find 
that it's in order to stand out, the great way to do it, and I think you, you did, you already, already mentioned it, but I w- definitely want to emphasize it, is your personality, like who you are. Just be yourself. Be authentic. Be be real, especially mm-hmm. like if you're emailing somebody that you have mm-hmm. never met. Just be as personable as you can. But like in your podcast, let your personality come out. I remember my first couple podcast episodes, it was horrible. I go back and listen to those. I'm like, oh my goodness, those are bad. But now, because I start feeling like, you know what? I'm just going to be myself. I can't be anything else but that. And whenever I try, it's horrible. So let me just be myself. And so, yeah, absolutely. So let's jump into the rapid fire round. Now in the rapid fire round, we're going to be asking you a couple questions that you're going to easily be able to answer, but hopefully get you thinking a little bit. So the first question in the rapid fire round is, because we have been successfully unemployed, we have a few extra hours. We're not working 40, 50, 60 hours for another somebody else working a job. We may have a little more time to give back and make the world a better place or even just our realm of influence, people around us, our family. How are you giving back to make things better around you? I'm giving back to my wife by spending more time with our kids. Uh, this is this is also completely selfish, by the way. Uh, it's not actually giving back to my wife. I don't want to sound like a complete jerk. But uh, just spending more time with my family not only helps out my wife, it helps out my family, which is close by too. And I'm going to argue helps out my kids. Like I, I spend a lot of time with my kids. They're super young, by the way. If they're like 15, I would not say this answer at all. Uh, that might be a cop out to your question, but that's my rapid fire answer. Awesome. Now, if you're going to go back and give yourself any tip of advice, you know, be it life, be it business, whatever it might be, like don't go and be a CPA or don't do it. What is one piece of advice that you would give your younger self that would help you to get where you are now? Start sooner or more specifically in my case, don't stop in 2009 when I started blogging and podcasting. Oh my gosh, how I wish I could give myself that advice. I started something I was interested in. I ended up being not like super good at it. Like I'm the best there ever was, but like I I figured out the tech part of like setting up websites and like editing podcasts back in like 2009 uh, and then 2010. But my friends convinced me to stop. That's a different story. I can go into that if you want me to, but that would be my advice. Like, please get started sooner or don't stop when you found something you're interested in, you're good at. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, shoot, in 2009, it was... it was just really, really starting out. And yeah, uh, oh, well, well, that's definitely another story how somebody could talk you out of that. And you're like, man, you just cost me millions of dollars. But anyways, long story short, let's move on. Yeah. So what is one tool? It could be an app. It could be a power tool. I don't know. One tool in your life right now that makes your life better, easier, your business better or anything like that. Oh, man. See, this is a hard question for me because I am a tool guy. I'm a nut when it comes to my software tools, I'm, I obsess over everything I use. So, you know, I want to recommend one that everybody can use. So I'm going to go with text expander. Have you heard of text expander, Dustin? Oh man. Okay. Now we're getting good here. So text expander, it kind of does what it sounds like. Actually, you can set up hotkeys, shortcuts on your keyboard for any sort of text that you type a lot. So if you have emails that you sp- send frequently, like when you're responding to people, or you type out your email address a lot. Mine is Pete at do you even blog.com. Or maybe if you have a website, your URL, HTTPS colon backslash backslash do you even blog.com. I can't stand typing that stuff. I go D D D and it populates. It expands shortcuts into sentences or paragraphs or whatever. I never type any passwords, actually LastPass, I won't go into it now, but people should use LastPass. I never type URLs, email addresses, color short codes. I do a lot of design work on the internet. I use hex codes, like color codes that I would never be able to remember. I have all that stuff like hotkey. You can set up shortcuts for anything, any text, any paragraphs, sayings, numbers, anything. Text expander. It's super cheap. Everybody could use that for something. And everybody I know who uses it loves it. That's fantastic. Thanks, man. That's I've never heard that one. So I'm definitely going to have to Look into that myself because I, you're right. I hate typing the same things over and over. And I just have to, especially your email address. That's like one of the easiest ones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So what is one book that you would suggest that everybody should read? Nonfiction. Wait, nonfiction or business books, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. It doesn't okay. have to be business. It could be life. It could be making your, you know, communication better. But yeah, nonfiction. I'm not really a book guy. This is really tough. Oh, Man, 
Uh, can we go to the next one? I'll come back to that if we remember. <laughs> So the last, and you've actually touched on it many times, was the last question was, if somebody were to get started, what is one thing that you said, other than get started, which we know, what is one thing that they should do to make sure that they either don't listen to the friends that are saying, don't do this, but what is one tip that you would give somebody who's starting out? <laughs> to fight that urge, to uh, conform to all those people around you. I told you my story in half an hour with the long version for a reason. And that is, I got funneled through life a little bit, not knowing what I want to do, not knowing where my true passions lied until I was like 33 or something like that. I kind of got funneled to college and then my careers and my jobs and all that stuff. And I just told you, my friends kind of made fun of me. So I quit, by the way, that, that's the short version of that story. I was really letting how other people like affected my life choices and my hobbies, blogging, on the business, podcasting, uh, it's hard to fight that. So there are people out there that probably think that's stupid because they don't suffer from that. If there's anybody else there who kind of feels that a little bit, you just kind of alluded to it as well. Do your best to fight through that and do what you want to do. I know it's super corny. I'm not even saying like follow your passion at all costs, but eventually, oh, I'm going to give you a book recommendation. This is not my favorite. This is not my favorite book of all time. I don't even know if I can re recommend it, but for this particular question, I'm killing two birds with one sode. It's called The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. And by an F, I mean curse word. Have you heard of this? The Subtle Art of, of, of Not Giving an F. Again, not one of my top books, but that for people like me who kind of got funneled or you know, are affected by how other people perceive them, Enneagram 3, performer, hashtag Enneagram, uh, that was a very helpful book for kind of like shrugging it off. And for the past two or three years, since I've been podcasting and blogging, putting myself out there and eventually getting past that fear, developing confidence along the way, uh, that has been all the difference in the world for my life, my career in general. It's a, it's a work in progress still to this day, but I would recommend anybody like me out there, just fight that at all costs, conforming, letting other people dictate what, decisions you make in your life. Awesome. Pete, you've given us so much great information and fun stories too. So I, I really appreciate you being on. Now, I know there are going to be many people that are going to want to reach out to you. And especially if you have the ability to, you know, you have a membership site or you, you have that where if somebody's getting that, maybe I should just give up, but they need people around them. They need you. How can somebody reach out to you so they can start doing what you're doing? Can we actually do something a little different and do a challenge? I'm going yes. to challenge listeners to this podcast. I want you to email me and do you mind, do you have a public email, Dustin? Can you throw out your public email for this? Yeah, it's Dustin at successfullyunemployed.co. .co. Dustin at successfullyunemployed.co. Copy Pete at doyouevenblog.com. I want you to email both of us. Dustin, I'm going to see how many emails we get from this. If you were listening to this audio, swerve your car to the side of the road, get off the elliptical, tell your kids to hush for a second so you can run to your computer. I'm joking, by the way, don't do any of this. But I want to see you reach out and take action, get started. Hashtag take action. We hear this a lot, but no one ever does it still to this day. So yeah, I'll say you can find me at doyouevenblog.com. Just my homepage. If you want to follow me and what I'm up to, just go there. Everything's there doyouevenblog.com. But more specifically, I want to challenge people. I want to have a little bit of fun right here. Play my game, everybody, Dustin's audience. Email Dustin at successfullyunemployed.co.co, Pete at doyouevenblog.com, and just say, hey, I listened all the way through the episode. I love you guys. Thank you for what you do. And then I love share your own URL. There yes. Go. Yeah. Good deal. Well, Pete, you're fantastic. Thank you so much for being on, giving so much great insights, wisdom, and information. So I really appreciate you, man. Thanks, Dustin. I appreciate you having me on, man. It's always fun to talk. Absolutely. You take care, buddy.